G'day, how you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy, and if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I live and work on, the Wajit people of Nungabuja. So today, I'm taking a look at the uh, wear and patina developing on my Oak Street bootmaker's natural Dublin leather trench boots. I bought this pair in the 2022 Black Friday sales in November 22 and I made a first impressions video in January of this year, you can watch it up there. Um, this is Oak Street Bootmaker's trench boot model and they reference this design as being adapted from World War I American trench boots. While they make this design in a plain toe as well, this one is a straight cap toe and you can choose the other trench boots in different outsoles from leather soles to ones like these using a day-night studded sole. They make them in a variety of leathers, uh, mostly from their Chicago neighbours, Horween Tannery, uh, and this natural Dublin is from Horween. I don't intend on going through the whole process of talking about construction. Uh, if you want to know that, you can go and uh, watch my initial impressions video, which I referenced previously. What I want to do with uh, this video is to go through how they have taken the wear that I've put them through and how they are beginning to show patina after five months. But for those of you watching now uh, who don't know about Oak Street Bootmakers, I will quickly talk about them and how this pair uh, is a little different from their previous offerings. Firstly, Oak Street Bootmakers was started in 2010 in Chicago by founder George Vlahos. I believe they make their boots largely in Chicago, although I think at one stage uh, their trench boots were made in upstate New York. Oak Street bootmakers are focused on trying to support the US bootmaking industry. And they not only manufacture in the US, but also try to source as much of their material as possible from the US, if that's important to you. Apart from the trench boots, they also make a couple of other styles like their lakeshore boot and field boot, as well as chuckers and shoes. I'm particularly impressed with this pair because they have shifted to hand lasting and this is one of their first pairs they were doing it in, but more of that later. I'll leave an affiliate link to their website below. It is an affiliate link. You don't pay any extra if you decide to buy something, but if you're going to buy a pair from them, I'd appreciate your using the link so that I get a little kickback to help me pay for the work on this channel. In terms of hand lasting, you know from looking at these, or after you check out my initial impressions video, that these are constructed using the Goodyear Welt construction method. If you want all the details about Goodyear Welt construction, you can also check out my Goodyear Welting 101 video up here. If you click on the link, you won't be taken away from this video, uh, but what YouTube does is puts the link on your screen uh, below the video, I think, for follow up later. I've basically said all I want to say about how these are constructed in my initial impressions video, but I do want to explain the hand lasting in these. Up until recently, Oak Street Bootmaker's uh, catalogue offerings have been machine lasted. A last is a foot shaped or a boot design shaped mould that the leather is stretched over to form the shape of the boot before the bottom is uh, attached and welted. Many, if not most, bootmakers will use lasting machines. Uh, the upper's leather panels are all sewn together, then put on top of the last, and then the last with the leather covering it is put into a machine, which has mechanical grips that stretch the uppers over the last. Obviously, this is quicker and potentially more uniform, but the machine can do funny things if you set the pressures wrong. Until recently, Oak Street bootmakers have offered hand lasting on their limited edition models, but now, more and more of their models are beginning to be hand lasted. This includes some of their standard trench and field boots as an example. I believe their lakeshore boots, uh, always slightly more expensive, have been always hand lasted for a couple of years now. The advantage of hand lasting is that a person can exercise greater control over the manipulation of the upper's leather, uh, responding to its unpre unpredictable stretching and folding characteristics, and hand finishing a pair means the bootmaker can apply some individual thought as to how things are made as it's being made. Disadvantage is that it's obviously slower, hence more expensive, and it can lack uniformity. For example, the folds under the toe cap 
uh, where the toe cap leather is stretched before the welt, is slightly uh, wrinkled and not perfectly smoothly stretched. Some might complain, but it's not structural. And I like the idea that someone pulled the leather here and stretched the leather there, and it's not perfect. A little like painting, freehand or paint by numbers, which would you prefer? One thing though, uh, I'm not sure if it's because of the hand lasting or because of the leather, the toe box is rounder and roomier than my other trench boot in Chrome Excel. When you use a machine to last, you set a pressure and the mechanical fingers come out and grab the uppers and push them down against the last in a uniform pressure and it doesn't uh, give if the leather reacts differently. In hand lasting, a person's fingers, with a sense of touch, is pulling the leather and the brain somehow compensates as the leather stretches and feels different. And ultimately, a person's hand uh, may get tired at the end of the day. So despite the same Alston last, you can see the toe box is definitely rounder and a, and a bit wider than my other pair in Natural Chrome Excel. Mind you, it could also be the Dublin leather, which I find quite supple and stretchy. Uh, I didn't really take note of the difference when new, and I've only just noticed it as, as I was prepping for this video. Uh, but it doesn't make for a loose fit. It's quite comfy, really. And while some people hate the wide uh, months and last look, I don't mind it. Understandably, more handmade processing comes with a higher price. But they haven't gone up a huge amount. Uh, still in the 400s to the 500s US dollars. I think the intention is to gradually move all models toward hand lasting. These uppers are tanned by Horween in Chicago. They make uh, this veg tanned Dublin leather as part of a suite of leathers that start as their Essex veg tanned leather with no additional finishing. Uh, uh, that Essex is then taken through an addition of waxes that, and, and then ironed flat uh, to, to produce this Dublin. A third stage in the suite, by the way, is taking this Dublin and putting it into a tumbler to create a more distressed effect and ending up with a veg tanned leather called Horween uh, Derby. So this Dublin leather is full grained, veg tanned and being natural it's not dyed and you can see the animal's pores and hair holes and streaky fat deposits on the surface. It's a leather that smells like leather, not like chemicals and the sound. Quite strong, pull up characteristic and as I've worn this pair quite hard and intensely over the last five months there is a streakiness developing in the patina. I wore these every day for a couple of weeks and then by the end of January, a month after I got them, uh, I'd probably worn them all day 20 or 30 times. Since then, I've worn them regularly because they really are very comfortable uh, with this Elston last having a, a nice roomy last to pull on when you're walking around. So overall, I, I haven't really logged use but I'd say because of the regularity uh, over the last five months, I've probably worn them for well over 60 to 70 day long wears. I've worn them in a variety of scenarios, say uh, half of them in office or indoor situations and the rest working outdoors on some home projects and uh, going on long hikes uh, most weekends. Most of that outdoor use has been in the Australian summer, so they haven't really got wet. But they have been covered in sand and dust because where I am, it's a heavy limestone base in the soil on the ground. When I take them hiking, I go through some national forests uh, near where I live and the terrain is rocky and dusty covered by scratchy grass and low scrub which they have brushed up against. I've cleaned them by brushing regularly and I have conditioned them twice in the last four months with Venetian shoe cream. Ultimately, for that wear, this is what they look like. Uh, the natural orangey leather has darkened so I describe it more as an orangey honey colour. The veg tan is sturdy enough but with use has got quite supple. You can see the uh, creasing and folds that have worn their way into the leather and the oils have moved around so that the uneven patina is growing. I think as I keep wearing these that patina will just grow and grow and I think the colour will keep deepening. When I wear these under denim or black jeans the colour really pops. Uh, take a look at some of this b-roll here and I'll add a bit more at the end of the video.
as I said, I have conditioned them twice with Venetian shoe cream, uh, first out of the box and then about two months ago. But my main care regime is just to brush them regularly uh, using long strokes. That's kept the sand and grit off and whether or not it's my imagination has kind of moved the tallow around and helped the streaky patina develop. Really, you don't need much more than that because the veg tannage is quite sturdy despite the suppleness. And anyway, this kind of boot, I think you want the minor scuffs and scratching patches that develop as you uh, kick the pedals of your car or miss a step off the curb or kick them against the wheels of your office chair. And in the case of this particular pair, get scrubbed up against timber as I did a, a project in the house. As for how the size I chose worked out, the fit does feel a bit looser after four months. Again, possibly because the leather has stretched more than I expected the veg tanned leather to stretch. But first, let's just talk size though. I measure a US 8.5 in D width on the Brannock device, UK 7.5. So I call that my true size. In most of my American boots, I take a half size down to an 8D. Oak Street Bootmakers says that their Elston last runs true to size, so I got these in 8.5D. The fit was initially really good, but after five months, it feels quite a, a lot less snug. Not big for sure, but bigger than the machine lasted pair in the Natty CXL that I showed you earlier. Just comparing it to say a Red Wing Iron Ranger in their wide round toe number eight last, uh, this is in size 8D. I think you can see by eye that the trench boot uh, at size 8.5 is about the same length as the Iron Ranger in size 8. Looking from the top down, the Elston last toe box looks wider uh, and maybe more round. Uh, look, as I said, my feet aren't slipping around in them, certainly no heel slippage. But if you lack a really snug fit in your boots, I think maybe you should go a half down from your Brannock but I'd personally be concerned a half down just might be a little too short. I like a little freedom for my toesies to have a good wiggle room. As for comfort, they've just got more and more comfortable in the last four months. It's not a heavy boot, so that helps, but certainly all the cork and leather under your feet and the Daynut outsole, I think they really conform to your feet the more you wear them. Uh, and it's not often I can honestly say of boots that they feel like slippers, but these come quite close. I bought these in last year's Black Friday sale for US uh, 381 bucks, that's 25% off. It was a limited edition and I'm not even sure that by the time you see this video that it will still be available. But there are other hand lasted boots in their standard offerings, as well as their limited editions in other different leathers. When I got these, the usual undiscounted price was 508 US and most of their boots were around the 400s and low 500s in US dollars. Today, their limited editions run at around 520 US dollars and their standard offerings are at the mid to high 400s. In my initial review, I said that maybe I wouldn't have bought them for the full price of 508, but I'm changing my mind after wearing them properly over a longer period of time. I'm really beginning to think that the quality of their normal trench boots at the mid 400s are about the right price uh, because of the quality. Uh, and this limited edition, or another like it at 520, is probably about right from the point of view of materials, quality of construction, and the feel and comfort. I'd really like to try a Lakeshore boot next time, so I think I'll be on the lookout for that one at the next sale. Uh, check on my channel from time to time and see if I get one. Better yet, click on subscribe and YouTube will tell you when I do. Oh, and click on like in the meantime. So after five months and pretty decent wear, um, more so in the five months than some others in my collection. What do I think of them? I like them. They fit me well, they're comfortable, the stitching and construction is good, the patina developing is coming along really well, and the patina is attractive and I believe can only get better. I like this matte wrinkly appearance rather than the oilier, wetter looking natural chrome XL. On the other hand, some may not like the slightly wavy toes due to the inconsistent hand lasting, and some will definitely not like the big wide toes. The price is pretty right. There are slightly cheaper boots like Parkhurst and Grant Stone, where the quality is arguably the same or even better. But I think Oak Street Bootmakers make boots that give off a certain character, charisma, and maybe I'd pay a bit more for their identifiable uniqueness. So that's it. Keep watching for more B-roll. And while you're here, don't forget to click on like 
and click on subscribe. It will really help me grow my channel, help it get seen by others. And if you like boots and you want more videos about boots, subscribing means that YouTube will notify you when I upload. Go on and click away. Until then, next time, I'll see you. Take care. See you soon.